<laughs> Are we top of the league? Yeah! Oh, fantastic. Welcome, Capacity Crowd, and welcome to you as well, whether you're watching on YouTube or listening on podcast. I'm Mark Murphy. Welcome to this week's edition of Life's a Pitch TV. We've got two great games to look back on and the local derby against Norwich to look forward to. That's all coming up on the show today. But let me shout you through the sponsors that make the show possible, first of all. Our main sponsor is DPS Tech. Also, thanks to All About Hearing, marketing company Ginger Pickle, Forward Floors, Come Hither Design, The Hudson Group, Sound 4 Pro Audio, Venue 16, Fred Olsen Logistics, John Keeble Cars in Bramford, The Dove in Ipswich, and Ashford Wright. And the sofa is sponsored by DPS Tech. Let me introduce you to the team. It's Terry Butcher. Yay! It's Russell Osman. Yay! And from TWTD.co.uk, it's Phil Ham. We have Richard and John on technicals. Yay! Mark's going to upload it later. Yay! And Leslie's our floor manager. Yay! What we need is a special guest, someone who knows what it's like to play in a local derby against Norwich. He is one of Ipswich Town's greatest, greatest, greatest ever players. Would you please give it up? It's only Johnny Walk! We like that. We like that very much. And, and I think there's probably another walkie song that we can sing. So let's have a crowd shot and let's sing the other walkie song that we know. Go on. What's this? There's only one Johnny Walk. One Johnny Walk. Walking along, singing a song. Walking in a walkie wonderland. There's only one Johnny Walk. Thank goodness. One Johnny Walk. Hey, brilliant. We could, we could just sit here all night and sing songs about you because there are so many. Welcome to the show. Thanks, thanks, Matt. Oh, it's fantastic to see you. Uh, what, a, what a capacity crowd you've drawn tonight, look. I can't believe it, yeah. It's, just, it's as good a crowd as it we was We were turning people away. Were you? We were turning people away at the door tonight. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what to say. Do you want me to tell the truth? I think actually no no people were passing, so we were a little bit worried we couldn't drag anybody off the streets. But uh, no, it's great. We've got football royalty here. We have indeed. Real royalty. We have indeed. Yeah, yeah. king of the king of Portman Road. Yeah. yeah. How many how many um, times have you played at Portman Road in different to three three eras? Yeah, well, seventies. My debut was seventy five, and my last game was ninety six. Which is not bad, is it? It's not bad at all, is yeah. it? No. Yeah. And, and we're going to talk about Monday's game in particular in a moment or two, and also the game against Blackburn. But uh, you were there Monday night, and you oh. were saying to me before we went on air today that the roar of that crowd at the end went. On the end the scary. It was like the it was like the old days. You know what I mean? The atmosphere was as good as our day. You know, and and that goal went and. and because we've played against a top team for me, you know, the best team that's came to Portman Road this season. And uh, to get that goal and get the three points, it was it was fantastic. Yeah, I pity anybody that went home early Yes. Uh, oh. to miss, miss the traffic. Uh, Mr Sheeran. Apparently. Ed Sheeran, we believe, yeah. possibly left oh, a bit early to miss the crowds. But um, I'm, I'm sure he's got a special link to be able to watch it all, bless his little heart. So, uh, But what a fantastic season we're having. Yeah, it's, well, you, you'd have took all day long, six games left, you know, to... To get good results in this, for a chance to get into the Premiership, you would have took it all day long. It's unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah, it's unbelievable. And the football, what, you know, especially the home games have been. That's the only games I've been seeing, and it's been really, really good. You know, the standard is good, and as I say we've dropped a few games away from home, but it's still fantastic. Have you have you noticed a difference? You know, because obviously you host the um, Sir Bobby Robson Suite yeah. before the games and after the game. Have you noticed a difference in there, though? The atmosphere's changed. I know oh. it's probably got fuller than it was yeah, yeah. many years ago. That's what it is. It's but packed. It, it, it used to be it was 80, 100. Now it's like over 200. And and you're getting a lot of, you know, not the regular ones. You're getting ones just coming in for the, you know, the one-off games and all that. But it's it's packed. The atmosphere is buzzing. Everybody's so happy. 
and then it's been a while since that's happened. Mm. A long while. Yeah. You're looking nice and happy though, John. Yeah, <laughs> I've just I've just come back from a, a trip <laughs> to uh, Tenerife, you know, for a week. So we had a usual few re few Real refreshments. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, it was good. When you can't go anywhere, and I go over there. There's you know there's fans a lot. You know, Scot a lot of Scottish people go on holiday, so they were want to get autographs and yeah. Liverpool fans and Ipswich fans so it was, uh, it was it wasn't really a holiday it was a signing session yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? well but you've got a few to it. sign here tonight as well because we haven't done that bit yet so you'll have to do that after the show uh, tonight but to come back to that match on, on, on Monday night was absolutely fantastic uh, we've got a lot to talk about we've got so many things to talk about with you tonight um, right. we'll come and do that in a moment or two but let's take a look at the season so far it's sponsored by and they're here tonight the Dove in Ipswich <laughs> They actually missed their cue to cheer at that point. The Dove in Ipswich. <laughs> Wake up. <laughs> uh, Phil, we'll start with um, Blackburn. Uh, who went to Blackburn? Yep, some of you went to Blackburn. That was a funny old game, wasn't it? I had to just look and remind myself of it. it was <laughs> the Southampton game has kind of dominated our thoughts, hasn't it, for the last few days. And, uh, yeah, a very sort of unusual sort of town performance in a way, I think, um, we started really well. We got the goal in the ninth minute. Connor Chaplin, um, lovely finish. Although I think their goalkeeper got an assist for the way he kind of bundled it into the into the net. Um, we, we looked kind of fairly comfortable first half, and then second half we were kind of under the cosh a bit. Very unusual for us, really. Um, but we are increasingly showing that we can cope in that circumstance. Sw Swansea was not dissimilar. Um, afterwards, Kieran McKenna he said that there was one. Of, there was a bit of illness in the squad. Leif Davis looked really rough when he went off. He didn't. He was coughing away, wasn't he? Yeah, he, he, could, he apparently could hardly breathe. So um, I think there would be one or two others that had had that as well. So um, that might account for why they kind of ran out of steam a bit because it's it's not like us as we as we saw on Monday night. We're a team that kind of uh, we're the ones that are usually finishing the game far stronger than the opposition. So. Um, yeah, I remember we, we talked a, a few weeks ago, didn't we, about there being nine games against teams that at that point were all in the lower half of the table. And we won eight of them, which is fantastic, isn't it, really? You can't. And actually, the one we lost was at Cardiff. And at 95 minutes, we'd actually won that game as well, hadn't we? We let in two very, very late goals. So um, extraordinary, really, to... Uh, to, to, to have that sort of run. And yeah, Blackburn was a was a sort of you know, a really ground out victory, the sort of victory you, you kind of need when uh, when you're going for a for a league title. I mean who who, who would think that we're at this stage of the season we're talking well, about a league title. The season, well you two. did and I think I think Scoey said Thank you, thank you, thank you, top two. You did and, and I think James Scowcroft said that at the uh, end of last season actually on Life's a Pitch he, on the radio that uh, he thought we'd be contenders right up there. So um yeah, hats off to those who uh, who predicted this uh this uh, remarkable season. Yeah. Did you? Did any of you guys watch it on the TV? Did you see the game? Were you in yeah. a bar somewhere walking watching uh, that? I was not? in a bar in Tenerife. Yeah. There's a shock. <laughs> yeah. And I was, I was not, well, I wasn't happy because you know I thought they're going to get an equaliser, blah blah blah. But in the end, when we won the game, then I heard all the other results. I thought, what a week! I'm going to have another drink. <laughs> you know. And it was so. It was yeah. It was it was it wasn't the best watching it, but at the end of it, it was great. It's not about get, you know having a performance. It's lovely to have a great performance, mm. but if you if you have to grind out games, then then do so because that's what wins the championships. It doesn't you know it's not going to be beautiful football all the time because team obviously read you because they played you already once this season. So you just got to grind it out. So mm. I'll take you know six poor performances but six wins any day now. You just, you just say you're happy to get the three points. Yeah, different type of result, wasn't it? One nil up at Blackburn, having to hang on for the rest of the game and really having to see that one through and holding on to that 1-0 lead. And then you go into the Southampton game, you go one up, and then you're chasing it from there on right the way through to the 97th minute, whatever it was. And surprisingly, we didn't even have a corner against Southampton. Win 3-2 and don't have a corner. It's incredible, isn't it? Amazing. Yeah. You know, but it just shows you how, how the, the team has matured and they have it in their capacity now to hang on to games you know, for 80-odd minutes, if need be, or they can keep going to the 97th minute and, and turn what looked like dropping a few points into a positive. How, how good was Southampton, do you think? Very good. I thought they were very good. Um, 
The passing was good. They're very mobile in midfield, um, especially in the first half. You know, I think we're ch chasing shadows a little bit yeah. early there, even though we did we did get a great goal from Leif Davis. But you know, we were we were struggling for a while. But I think, I know he said, I think the the game away was not dissimilar. That they lack ruthlessness going forward. And they're always prone to make a mistake at the back, aren't they? Yeah. And we, we profited from that at St. Mary's with Amari um, Hutchinson's goal. And I think our first goal came from them losing the ball sort of midway inside their, their own half. And then us, you know, eventually end up with yeah. Morsi playing that terrific ball. So that got us ahead. Then they got those two goals very quickly. Um, but again, the substitutions just changed the game, didn't they? They changed the game for Southampton. They got worse. <laughs> <laughs> so their, substitu their substitutes weren't very good. Yeah. But ours were absolutely brilliant. Yeah, yeah it was yeah, brilliant yeah. to come As on. always, fantastic. Yeah, what did you make of it, Walkie? Yeah. yeah, very similar. For an hour, they were well on top. And then they made the changes and we sort of went on top and scored the goals. And the goals were, you know, the last goal was, I thought, was fantastic. I don't know if he meant it. You know, it, firstly, his left foot, you know, gets, and he got caught again. And then... I thought, what is have he going to do now? And he's toe punted it with his right foot. Have you ever done that? Toe punted it with your right foot and it's gone in the net? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought your answer was going to be no, everything was all clean cut no, and perfect. Yeah. I'd go with an if toe punt head or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but as long as I go in, mate. Would you have liked to have played in today's era with all these substitutes coming on? Because we had one. I oh, know. Russell made the point to me before. We had one, didn't we? And that was yeah. it. Yeah. One sub. It does make a difference, but and I think the way the first half went, it sort of forced Kieran's um, uh, decision at half time to make make substitutions or get substitutions ready then and early on in the second half because something needed to happen. And he knows he's got lads on the bench that will go in and uh, put a damn good turn in and make a difference when they go on. And they needed that sort of little bit of a a spark and they provide it again Taylor came on obviously he came on a little bit earlier um, and I was saying towards the end of the game you know we've got to get uh, Sarmiento on now because yeah. you know we're running out of time and he's the one that might just nick us something I didn't expect him to do it mind but you know <laughs> he has got that knack though hasn't he he's one of he those has, players yeah. that comes on and I think when he started games I don't think he's been as impressive uh, but when he comes on, he almost always makes an impression. And was it Leicester goal that he got, didn't he? There's, I think there was another one he scored that was very important towards the end of a game. A bit like Martin Reusser towards the end of the 1999-2000 two season. He just has if that knack. If you turn it around, and w if we'd have been playing for 90 minutes, it's two centre-halves, and you've had a tough game, and you, you're, you're <coughs> blowing a little bit, you know, and your concentration's going a bit because you're tired. And then somebody like Sarmiento comes yeah, on. on. You know, he can rip you apart because he's going to be half a yard quicker. You know, and by the time you think you've got him, he's already he, gone. He, he, always he always looks as though when he gets the ball, he's looking for a shot. He's looking, yeah. he's looking yeah, to shoot. And he gets a lot blocked. Walking. But yeah, a bit like yeah. John, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like John because John would shoot and score. So there we go. <laughs> Thanks, Agent. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. I've actually heard that Sarmiento trains five days a week as well. <laughs> 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 he's, not man, he's not Man Friday like yeah, you were. No, no, People no. say, how did he carry on playing so long, have such a long career? He never trained Monday to Thursday. He sort of waddled out on a Friday and said, uh, Mr. Robson, I'm fit. Well, what was the point of training when he scored the goals? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I had to uh, go to the physio and say, what, what, what am I going to tell the boss? <laughs> what, in, what injury? What injury? <laughs> it went we'll come to that in a moment. Yeah. So I just wanted to stick with that game on Monday night for, for one more moment and talk about the crowd um, and the energy and the noise and the roar of that crowd was just unbelievable, wasn't it? I've, I've not heard it like that, as I said, earlier for... A long, long time, but at the end of the game was as good as since our day. You know what I mean? Not giving it that, but I just think when when it's like that, the whole place is buzzing, everybody's happy, and uh, let's hope there's more of it. And and you know, 99.9% .9 of them didn't go. Um, they oh, waited for you know 10, 15 minutes yeah. after the match, and the roar, the singing was just carrying on and on and on and on and on. Um, fabulous. Yeah, you could have been in the middle of the Orwell Bridge and you'd have heard that goal go <laughs> I know. In your car, in traffic. Yeah. Yeah. With, the radio, with the radio on. Was that, was that you? 
Mm. <laughs> no, it wasn't. I, wasn't. I stayed to the end this time. Yeah. I was there. No, it, it was, was a fantastic. It was, it was a special. It was a special goal. Yeah, yeah that was. But a special little player. But it's so special in terms of, you know, the obviously the the outcome sort of thing. Where yeah. where town are going top of the league. Yeah. And the was noise, the noise was, noise was just whoa. phenomenal, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And also Connor Chaplin. I think we have to mention Connor Chaplin. Yeah. Breaking the world record there to uh, get Forrest Gump. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Run, Forrest. <laughs> From one yeah, side run, of the pitch. Run. Yeah, phenomenal. Oh, you can see the well, whether that was Ipswich or you know, or the bit of the Portsmouth supporter in him in that scoring against That's Southampton. Qu- yeah, I know, scummer. Yeah, yeah. so um, <laughs> mm, no, it was it was terrific, and and the goalkeeper joining in the cele- celebrations as well, and no, absolutely fabulous, and and also the roar at the f- like final whistle as well, and how long it all went on for. That was yeah. the other thing. It just you know it wasn't sort of uh, and then everyone leaves, everyone stayed, didn't they? And there's fantastic. Uh, it's very it's really interesting on social media the last few days that kind of every time you sort of scroll down Facebook, the goal comes up again. The goal comes up <laughs> with with a different commentary. You know, you have got Talk Sports commentary or Brenner's commentary or and then um, and then Chappers runs across. Yeah, then, then <laughs> someone, someone, someone's done that with with with, with different music or um, darts commentary on it, haven't they? And what would have happened if all the bench had gone over to the corner? Would they, would all the bench then get booked? They've all got booked. Yeah, up, I imagine so. Yeah. 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 Wow. That would have wasted a bit of time, wouldn't it? That's a good, yeah, yeah, yeah. Note that, note that down for any future jobs you might have. Yeah. And, all the, and all the Ipswich staff would have gone on there. Yeah. 100, 100 and odd people and 200 people. That would be brilliant. And of course, the results, you know, pretty much went our way over the whole weekend, didn't they, as well, which was fantastic. And it was great to see Norwich lose, wasn't it, as well? You know, yep. when they went one ahead, I thought, oh, well, here we go. Well, hang on, hang on. That was the game we needed them to win. That was. Yeah. I know, they couldn't even do that for us. But, it, you know, it, it, you know, it didn't matter, you know. What a, what a dilemma that was. I know. It was a real I dilemma. I Actually, I started to watch it and I, I, I saw them score and I kind of, oh, mm, it's very difficult. And then Leicester scored and I thought, this is only going to go one way. Yeah. And uh, just couldn't watch it after yeah, that. We, and We've never cheered when that lot have scored, have we? Really? No, so it's, it's very difficult. But I, thought, I was hoping for a draw. I think a, you know, a draw would have been no. not too bad, I suppose. Yeah, I think that would have been kind of a, a nice result for us. But um, Well, we're several points ahead of uh, Norwich City, aren't we? I think we're 20, right. aren't we? And look at the 20? canary above my head. It's getting even flatter and flatter <laughs> and uh, flatter. Let's talk about you, Walkie. We've waited all season to get you on this big sofa. Uh, right. Great to see you. Cheers. How did you arrive at Portman Road? Uh, I arrived by bus. Okay. Hey. Uh, and it was it was from Glasgow. Did you, did you did you pay for it at all? No, it wasn't a gift or something. Someone pay you or fare or something. No, I paid. That's oh, how paid. tight right. they were as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Serious. And I got a bus from Glasgow, and it took twelve hours to get to Ipswich. And I thought, and then when I got here, I thought, do I need a passport? Because it was that long. But that was the way back. You know, when I was fifteen, fourteen, fifteen. Who scouted you? Yeah, uh, there, there was a scout in, uh, in Glasgow who did all all of Scotland. And uh, basically, I was in a top boys club team there. Uh, Drumchapel Amateurs, a very famous team, where a lot of players from that club went and made it professional. And uh, he saw me, he says, it's which town are after you. And at the time, Man City were after me as well, so I went to both clubs. And uh, But I'm, I'm glad uh, I came to Ipswich, because... Basically, Man City said, said uh, we don't really fancy you at the moment. We might have to come and see you again. Oh. Come for another try. And I well, went, at oh. the time, though, were you having, tri- not trials, but did you train with Celtic at the time? What? When you were younger. <laughs> did, you not, did you not do that? Did you not do I that? I would never be allowed to even go near Celtic. Oh, OK. Well, we cleared that one up did anyway. <laughs> no, but uh, I've got a story about like Celtic. Ipswich played, uh, well, firstly, I'll do... The story with Rangers and then Celtic. Ipswich played Rangers uh, in a friendly a long time ago, and basically all my family were there, and they're in the director's box with the Rangers scarves and everything on. And uh, we beat Rangers 2 1. Guess who scored po- both goals? Me, <laughs> right? So my family didn't speak to me for a month <laughs> after the game. But then I go and play for Liverpool against Celtic in a testimonial, t- uh, Tommy Burns' testimonial. And it, the game, I thought, I done okay in the game. I thank goodness we beat them as well, Celtic. And uh, I'm in the lounge after the game, and the manager of Celtic comes in, uh, Billy McNeil, famous centre back, one of the best players ever. And uh, he calls me to the side and says, "Do you fancy coming home, John?" I went, "Yeah, I love Glasgow." He went, "Here?" I went, "No way." I said, <laughs> "My family would disown me if I came here." <laughs> so that's that's the story about the Rangers Celtic. 
Good, oh, good choice, I think. Good yeah, good I think you made the right choices, yeah. don't you, everybody? I think you made the right choices. So I'm glad I came. That yeah. switch, well, course. you had you know three fantastic spells here, didn't you? As you, yeah. as you said earlier on, um, who, who was around when you first arrived? Who, what were the players around you when you first arrived at Portman Road? Well, it was still like Big Hunter, you know, on the beat. You know, I was because I, I made my debut. You know, and they were the at the time, you know, beat get injured, didn't they? In 1975 and. A few other centre backs were injured then. I think it was Glenn Wesley and Dale Roberts. So I was fifth choice, and uh, I was playing the youth team on a Tuesday when the first team were playing Leeds in that famous quarterfinals. And uh, as I said, I'm playing the youth team, and I got a call saying, "Oh, you might be needed as a couple of injuries." And I went, oh, "No way!" So I go away to uh, Filbert Street. It was on the Wednesday for the game Thursday. And Bobby calls me, says, you're playing. I went, oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, this is the quarterfinals of the FA Cup, you know, against the famous Leeds team. And uh, I just, I just, it was unbelievable. It was just, Big Were Hunter. 17? Look, 16, Big Hunter 17? looked after me. Pardon? 17? Yeah, I was only 17. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're throwing in at the deep end. So who were you up against on the Leeds team then? Who, what was uh, it was uh, Joe Jordan and Alan Clark. So ten minutes into the game, they had Billy Bremner, Johnny Giles, Norman Hunter, right. you know, Maidley, famous team, all hard as nails. Ten minutes into the game, Joe Jordan, who I, I was a friend with later on, you know, a teammate, uh, he headbutts me. You know, I thought, welcome to the big time. You know what I mean? <laughs> Whoa! And then the other one, but the worst one between the two of them was Alan Clark. Alan Clark kept elbowing me in the face and spat in my face. And I couldn't handle I was only 17. I'm glad Big Hunter's beside me. And Big Hunter went up to me and says, you do that again, I'm going to break your effing back. <laughs> never seen him again. <laughs> never never seen him for the whole game. We ended up winning the game and it was... One of the, I couldn't believe it. Yeah, Big Al was quite an enforcer, wasn't oh, he? Oh, my God. Even when I see him all the time now, when he shakes my hand, it's, <laughs> it's still sore. You know what I mean? For days. But, yeah, he... he, he so you done well for me at the early, early stages of my career. And uh, what happened after that? Well, how long was it before you kind of established yourself in the side? Well, best, I think it was basically the, probably a year or so after that. Because I, I made my debut as a centre back, but as I say, I could play midfield as well. And you play right back and left back. Yeah, and, and striker. Yeah, I've played striker as well. Yeah, I liked that because it gets you scoring goals in it. Yeah. Yeah, but it was quite easy. I thought it was quite easy. Because you don't have to run about as much. <laughs> but mind you, you say that at centre backs, you don't have to run about as much, do you? Yes, you do. A bit used to. <laughs> you, do have, you do have to do oh, some I running. I used to though. help, used to all the time. Well, that's why uh, you became a midfield player, because you didn't like running. Uh. Excuse me, you were our defensive midfield player. Correct. Sitting just in front of me and Terry. Because yeah. it. To protect us. How many goals did he get every year? On average, maybe. 20 or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. You're 36 be, You're supposed to be helping us out, not yeah. scoring goals, you know. So, I, But I had to help you because the, the two Dutch boys weren't helping you. Gatesy wouldn't help you because no, he's a lazy no, sod. No. Yes. <laughs> so you helped us for a bit and then he just cleared off up the road and yeah. stuck one yeah. in the back of the net and then he come back again. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Easy. Easy. So <laughs> thanks for your help. <laughs> <laughs> never missing, though. Our defensive midfielder was never missing from his defensive duties oh, when we needed him. Never. How he got up and down, I don't know, but, you know... Do you know what Jock Steen, his man, he used to say to me, Johnny Watt was only decent in both boxes. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he said in a team right, talk once. He? And yeah. I says, yeah, you're probably right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Only decent. Yeah. Only. Yeah. Just only. Yeah. So do you think, you, I mean, obviously, the players getting box to box in that way yeah. is very much the modern game, isn't it? You think you'd, you'd cope quite easily with modern football. It's easy if you've not trained Monday to Friday. Yeah, if you don't yeah. train, yeah. <laughs> when you're getting on a bit, you don't train till Friday. Is, yeah, it's quite easy. But I think box to but I don't think they do it that much. They don't, they do too many passes and all that. We were, we could go direct as well and then got it wide when it's cut back. As soon as it went to the wide players, I'm in the box. And I used to go in all the time and But the actual but the actual wide men now when they when they, they, they go at the full backs, they very rarely cross it across the face of the goal oh, or hang yeah, a ball up yeah. to the far post like we used to. They always it's always cutbacks. Yeah. So therefore, you know, you could then come in, your timing your timing yeah. was always good. Yeah, good yeah. But you could that you know, that would be suited to you more, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would. As I say, that was 
I just knew I knew where to go in the penalty box, and if the balls come in. But your your timing was something that was different from a lot of other players. Because you told me one day that you used to watch the eyes of the person that was marking you, oh, yeah. and when he looked to see where the ball was, I'm away. Bye bye. <laughs> then yeah. you'd nick your yard. And I just did that a lot as well. Corner kicks, you know, and yeah. tell I used to like just yourself or or Maris, they would go near post. I went, you you get there, flick it on, I'm going to score at the far post. And the guy that was marking me, as soon as it was flicked on, I went there and then I went straight in. It was a goal, mm -hmm. Mo most of the time. Simple. Because he just switched off. <laughs> it is, yeah. <laughs> Wish you told me that 30 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I don't think you would have felt. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't. So a lot of goals were like that with but people. But every ball that came to you wasn't a perfect ball for you no. to score. You had yeah. to do something with it at times. And sort of dig it out, or you know, as a header and all that sort of thing. So you know, your finishing was was pretty, you know, pretty yeah. good, but it was actually quite, um, you know, like roof, you're ruthless when the, when the ball came in. It came in the in the box, bang, walk, score. Yeah, it's good, yeah. You know, one of those oh, ones. Yeah. It's a bit, you know, your your technique. You very rarely smashed the ball. It no. was always like a nice contact and place it. Yeah, what, like in training, yeah. we were done finishing. Mm. A lot of my finishing was safe foots in the corner. Know yeah. what I mean? so you see, we didn't, we didn't have that. We we never got into the box to score goals because we had to supply the bloody balls in for you. That was all the time. <laughs> then I would come and see you. No, after you would. You'd run off. You'd <laughs> run off, giving it yeah. one of the corner away from us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Scorers do that, don't they? But airily, airily, I, I can't remember who was saying that they'd rarely seen anyone better in the air at finishing than, than John. That that sort of could it kind of pick it. his spot in the way that other players pick their spot with their boot. He picks his spot with his head. Is that? Do you know why I, I learned a lot from the beat? I used to watch the beat, you know, on his timing of headers, you know, and I just thought, I'll try that. And, and when you do it as a midfield player, you get a lot of joy, you know, but a, a lot was from, from the beat. But there was a lot of work involved with that as well. Because we, we did a lot of crossing and finishing, didn't we? Like patterns of play out, you know, in, yeah, up the striker the back, time, out yeah. wild, I mean, in the box. George would whip it in, yeah. or Mills would whip it Not bad at penalties either, were you? Yeah, not, yeah. yeah not bad. I always yeah. thought if I got a penalty, it's a goal. That's in my head was that way. Yeah. Did you have one side that you preferred, or did you just? I I did prefer, you know, the goal to the, the left. left side. Yeah, in the side net. Hmm. You know what? But there was one game where I, we played the the Greek team and I scored three in one game, and then you start thinking, do you change your mind? And in the end, I went. To the right, to the left, top corner. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, easy. <laughs> I wish you'd been playing against Manchester United when we won 6 0 and there were three penalties. I know there's three, yeah, exactly. three penalties. No, I didn't play that. that would have been 9 0 to us. Yeah, it would have been, United, yeah, we'd yeah. have got one over them ahead of what happened to us, yeah. And I played in the 9 0, we lost. Mm. That's when I thought I better retire. <laughs> Wasn't there? Uh, you were, That's what the manager thought as well. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't you have a, a fitness test in the hotel corridor? Is that right for that game? What's that? It was a fitness test in the hotel corridor for the nine nil, wasn't it? Something like that. Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't well. I, guess. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to get out of it, so that was my excuse. But then I tell people, I still thought that game nine nil. I was man of the match. <laughs> that was Martin Andy Cole. He scored five. <laughs> So <laughs> I think we're down. All his goals were all tap -ins. You know, it wasn't my fault. <laughs> <laughs> but that, after that game, I did seriously think about calling it a day. Not because of I couldn't do it, but the team we had personally. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's not my fault. <laughs> Let's talk about some of the successes, some of the many successes. I mean, we, you know, we could talk to you for hours and hours and hours about the successful careers that you've had at various different yeah. uh, times in your life. But uh, FA Cup run, oh. first of all, um, your thoughts and memories of, of, of that season. When, when did you realise that actually we could go quite a way in this competition? I, I probably realised, uh, I think, the quarterfinals when Millwall, you know, I know we played Millwall away and they're dirty, you know, dirty sort of we stuffed them, didn't we? Took them at the cleaners. I, think it was, I got, I scored one, and so he, that's when I first thought we've got a chance. And then we had a hard semi-final. West Brom, they're a decent side, and but the great feeling about that game was not because myself as well. The last 90th minute, it was two-one for us, and they were putting pressure on, and we got a corner, and I've scored a header, and that, that was it. We knew we were at Wembley, and what a feeling that was. For all the goals I've scored, that was the one that 
sticks out because what it meant and getting to Wembley, you know, as a you know twenty one year old is you can't beat it. Can you describe that that feeling when that final whistle goes and you know that you've got oh. the FA Cup final in a couple of weeks? It was just I didn't know what to do. You know, you didn't know how to celebrate. You were like, I was only a kid and. Did you slide on your knees then when you scored like they do no, now? I was not, no, I would have got injured now. <laughs> I wouldn't train again for another week. No Hutchinson backflips or anything no, like that? No, he's a brick, no. No, I wouldn't do things like that. Weren't the celebrations on the way back to Ipswich big after the semi-final? Yeah, it's quite a... Yeah, it was, we stopped off at a couple of places for a couple of drinks. The Army and Navy. Yeah. 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 I can't believe we're going to a pub... And these fat Ipswich Town fans are in there. They must have thought it was Christmas <laughs> when we walked in. You know, you're like, oh my god. There's some great pictures taken after the after the semi final win. Yeah. Um, of Sir Bobby, Kevin, Maras, yeah. and Big Al sitting in the corner of the the changing room, changing. and in high breathing, the underfloor heat in the marble floors and everything, and. and Alan's got a fag on and a cup oh, yeah. of tea and a glass of scotch and Sir Bobby's got a scotch on and yeah. Mars has got a beer, Pete's got a beer, a fag, a tea, <laughs> a scotch. <laughs> it's great, wasn't it? You yeah, know. it was. It was just knowing you were going to, you know, you're at Wembley and that was a place to be. I, ironically, we're at Highbury for the semi, then he play Arsenal in the final. Yeah. I and know. what did what did Geddy say to you as you were coming off the pitch at half time, David Geddes? At the. In the final. At half time? Yeah. I don't well, did he not say to you, if you're going to shoot, he says, try not to hit the white bits? <laughs> did he? That, if I knew that, I'd have knocked him out. <laughs> <laughs> did he? And then you hit the post and bar the second half. Well, that's a, another story. I've hit the post twice and Paul Marin has hit the crossbar and Roger scores the, the goal, the famous goal. And after the game, uh, <clears throat> I've got, got the medal, 21-year-old. And my mum and dad were at the game, just, and I knew where they were sitting, just at the side as you're running around, and and uh, my brothers were there as well, and I've went over to them, and, all, and, and they didn't speak to me. They went like that, and mu miserable. I says, what are you miserable for? He says, we had a, a tenner on you at 21 to score the first goal. Why didn't you score? <laughs> I'm like, what the f... Did you did you not touch the ball for the first fifteen minutes in the final though? Well, the reason why, yeah, you're right. No, I think it was twenty minutes, twenty, nineteen or twenty I'm minutes. Trying to do you a favour there. But, uh, yeah. All right, I, I was Martin uh, Hudson, you know, Hudson, was <laughs> Alan. Alan Hudson, who thinks he's decent, but he never got a kick. So basically, I was Martin him out the game, but both of us, he didn't get anything forward or whatever. So I didn't. You had your own little party together without just, the football, yeah. yeah. And then the set, apart from that, but everybody remembers about. Hitting the hitting post the woodwork, and hitting yeah. the woodwork. So, Pete used to tell the story about Malcolm McDonald in the tunnel. Oh, We'd come over and uh, and say, you know, good luck and all this kind of stuff. And then Big Al, oh. had a, I can't repeat what Big Al said to Malcolm McDonald. Oh, no. um, I know, but he it. didn't have a particularly good game, did he, McDonald oh, that day? He, I think he was slightly scared of. Yeah, I think he was. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> and he wasn't the only one. I'm still scared of him. <laughs> Big Al. But what what a moment in 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 your career? Yeah, you know, such a it, young lad, and because it's a start and just getting a medal when you're you know twenty one. That was it. You know, I was I was happy with that then, and that was. But then it got better and better. Yeah, and then these boys, you know, starting yeah. to be regulars yeah. as well. well it was sadly I played all the rounds apart from semi final final, and having only one substitute in those days, Mickey Lambert was the better option because yeah. if Alan or Kevin had broken down. And John would have gone back at centre half. Back, Mickey yeah. Lambert would have come into midfield or well, juggled that round. So, um, if it's a modern era, I would have got a medal. Yeah. yeah. Oh. oh. <laughs> Don't we have a whip round? Anybody <laughs> listening from the FA? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have a word, see what we can do. Well, it's pretty harsh, though, isn't it, when you played such a big part? Yeah, I was in it? those days, yeah. But, you know, that's just life. That's how it goes. Yeah. And, and But you were sort of around at that time as well, weren't you? You know, going to the games? Yeah, I used to love going to the like the... Uh, quarter final. I was I was there. I was thirteenth man, and the when that, all the bottles were hitting the roof and everything else like that. I was in the dugout, so I was quite safe. It was quite <laughs> good. And then the, obviously the semi final, but uh, and the final itself. We used to go with. We were part of the group that went with all the staff. And in those days, you could get all the staff in one bus. You need about ten <laughs> buses now. So we used to go along, and we had some. We had a very. Um, we celebrated before the game. 
So we knew we, we knew we were going to win. So we had a few beers before the game. It was great. Can't I'll remember much about the games, but it was good fun. Yeah, I've everybody was together. It was lovely. I've only celebrated once before the game. Have you? Yes. <laughs> When was that? Uh, since 18. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. Well, that was, yeah. a, that was, hours, that was story, a long while before. Uh, all right. <laughs> Do you want to uh, tell a bit more about that? Uh, uh, no, but you know, that's one of the best results we've ever yeah. had. We played St. 18 away, and they've got Platini, Johnny Rep, Falcao, hadn't lost in 30 games. And uh, on the Tuesday, we were doing a bit of training, and uh, Bobby says, right, afternoon off, you can go shopping. So it was his fault. <laughs> right. So Bobby, so... Seven of the team, six or seven of the team, I don't know if the boys were there. We ended up going to a pub. We found a pub the day before the game, and we didn't go stupid. We only had six or seven pints, you know what I mean? And then we get back into the hotel, and Bobby goes, you're fine two weeks' wages. And I went, oh, how am I going to pay them up? Panicking, whatever. The game starts, and uh, they go 1-0 up, you know, and we score four. I scored one of them. 4-1. Yeah, it was for my cross, but you obviously... Yeah, I know, I made, it, I made right your away, cross yeah. look good, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> your cross was up there, uh-huh. going back the way, and I had to head it in the top corner. I knew it was you, I knew you'd oh, get there. Oh, did you? Yeah. Rubber rub neck, and he was... So, in, yeah. so then, final whistle goes, and, you know, as I say, Bobby goes, right, lads, just forget the fine. It was like that. And the other four goes, what fine? He went... Well, you were shopping, they seven were on the piss. <laughs> that's, that's what he said to him. But the other four weren't shopping. No, they weren't oh. shopping, yeah, exactly. So, just a different pub, wasn't it? Just so a that different was just, pub, yeah. Didn't get caught. We were, we, were cle- we were cleverer. I bet then we beat them 3-1 at home, so we beat them 7-2 in Agri. That's, that's scary. Yeah, French champions, weren't they? I know. Yeah. Hadn't lost in so many what, games. Oh, was it Platini? Yeah, he's yeah, still in my yeah. pocket. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 Uh, the final, of course, uh, memorable, oh, memorable. Yeah. It was just yeah, the whole, the whole year for cup was. Yeah. You scored in that as well, didn't you? Yeah. Pan. You scored in that. Yeah, as well. I scored in the. F- <laughs> well, I think I scored more. Scored too early, really, because that's yeah. what stung them into doing something. Yeah. The it's first leg was quite comfortable and it quite easy, but then, but the set we were hanging on at the end of the, you know, the second half. They they just went at us, you know, and they didn't. I think they yeah. left the centre back. Yeah, well, just, after yeah. after Franz scored the early goal yeah. to give us a what was it four four yeah. lead, they they yeah. just threw the kitchen sink at us, didn't they? Yeah. You know, all all hell broke loose. Well, and they only play something like sort of just left two centre backs and everyone two, else. Yeah, that's four, what they left. Two, yeah. Four, yeah, yeah. yeah. To do that, you'll get some nerve. Just threw everything. It yeah. was uh, it was that was one of the hardest games we ever had oh, in the way yeah, for that shadow. Yeah. yeah. You know, you play the. You, I mean, generally, most of the teams we played were like champions of their own leagues so it was it was a very high standard oh, yeah. so we always used to win at home he'd, he'd score a hat full of goals and it's quite comfortable and then we'd struggle away from home yeah and have dodgy referees in greece cool. and just a bit yeah so, poland yeah. yeah bad conditions bad pitches in the snow in the ice and everything mm. yeah but lifting the fa uh, the uefa the cup, cup yeah was just amazing but that was quite heavy actually the that cup, <laughs> you know what I mean? I remember Maras, remember the town hall? Yeah. Yeah. He nearly dropped it. Yeah. Remember, we were up in the town hall and he nearly dropped it out the, the roof. It is the heaviest, yeah. isn't it? It's, it's one of the heaviest the trophies, yeah. you know, to, to yeah. you can't really. But it costs a fortune to fill it as well, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Mostly, yeah. So we never filled it much. It's a little drag in there. But that was yeah, my that year was just my best year ever you know what I mean and yeah well you, you you equalled Altafini's record didn't you yes, of, yeah. of uh, European I goals I don't know who he was 14 played for AC Milan in the, I think he probably played for AC Milan um, when they played Ipswich in the, right. in the 60s but it was 62-63 that he actually um, set the record I'm reading this as you can tell oh yeah um, and, and yeah and PFA player of the year as well yeah that was see that's the one that stands out as well because your your fellow professionals vote for you you know what I mean but and we had a great time. We went to the Hilton, and you know it was it was a great night. You know what I mean? Because it was six nominees, and I think it was somebody from Villa, Liverpool, Man U, and the other th- the first three were Tyson, you know, Mariner, and I got first. And it was just a great night, you know. And I can't remember getting home. I don't like, you know what I mean? It was. <laughs> Did you go there too that night? Were you there? I was there. Yeah, yeah we were there. Yeah, yeah there. we were there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah I remember yeah, that. And uh, back in the mob, you know. Yeah, it was the table we had was, was just with all the lads in there and yeah. other people too. A couple of tables. It was just 
it was a great night because of the you know the boys all got into the top three and yeah, it was great. walking with Johnny was top scorer in, in Europe that year as well. It was an unbelievable year. Yeah. Um, Johnny and Paul had a party in the room that night as well. Yeah, oh, yeah. oh, did you? Yeah, oh, yeah tell yeah, us about I that. I forgot about that one. Yeah, uh, well, basically, a few other players, you know, other ex players come up to the room and we just, you know, drink and drink until, I don't know, four or five in the morning. I was all right the next day, I was fine. And uh, as I say, we got up and I says to Paul, uh, we better go and sort the bill out. You know what I mean? And I says to Paul, we got out in the reception, I said, how much you got? He went, I've got a fiver. <laughs> and I went, oh, luckily I've got a tenner. So I says, have you got the bill for room 324? And it was 650 quid. <laughs> so I'm going, me and Paul were looking at each other going, what, what are we doing to do it? And John Cobble walks in. Johnny, Johnny, you got a problem? I went, problem? Yeah, the bill's six. He went, leave it with me, son. He just went like that and he went, it must have been a hell of a night. <laughs> <laughs> Probably that was that was at the Hilton the next day. I thought it was, I thought he would. Uh, I thought he would give you a bit of a rollicking because he wasn't invited. He wasn't. Yeah, exactly. That's probably. But he he just went bump. I was signed for it. Yeah. I mean, what what bosses to have you oh, had? You oh, know, really Mr. Robson, the Cobolds. I mean, a, 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 amazing times. Yeah, Cobolds were fantastic. They're great they, John? they were yeah. great people and. They were always drunk as well, you know what I mean? It's just, every time you spoke to them, they were happy. They were happy. They were happy. They were happy. Very yeah. happy. <laughs> well, they must have been, because we had a fantastic football team, mm. didn't we? Yeah. yeah it was, who I mean, won, it, who it won was, a lot of things. It was a great era as well, with the, you know, the mid-70s, the FA Cup semi-final team, which you, which you, you started yeah. in, all the way through to 78, then 81. It was yeah. a, and in Europe, all those years on the trot, and never lost a, 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 a home in Europe. It was an incredible feeling, and it was it wasn't just for one or two seasons, it was for a big span, sort of you know like twelve, fifteen years or how long it was, but it was it was just the boys coming through the youth team together, yeah. and yeah. everybody knew each other. You knew your jobs, you knew the yeah. systems. He changed the system, Bobby, after the after seventy eight into the you know, one behind the strikers, and that's Gatesy, and it, it was just it was just well, yeah. it was a happy happy days because it was pure football. Played the right way, everybody gave their all, and you could trust everybody on the yeah. team. And then, obviously, uh, time to leave the town. How did that come about? When I left? Yeah. Well, the reason I left was because Bobby went to be the England manager, and I, I couldn't see Ipswich being a force, or, or sorry, winning things. And I, I asked for a transfer, like a lot, a lot of people did, and I was lucky enough to go to Liverpool. You know what I mean? I went to Liverpool, and... The first year we won the treble, so it's it was <laughs> what's the, it wasn't bad, you know what I mean? But you know, as I say, I didn't want to go, and it, that proven because when I left Liverpool, I came back again. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, then I left again, then I came back. So, but uh, I had three great years at, at Liverpool, yeah. but at the fantastic football who, club. Who, who were the players around you in Liverpool? There was, they're all Douglas, Hansen, Sooners, you know what I mean, Rush. You know what I mean? Ronnie Whelan, Phil Neal, Alan Kennedy. And we had one mad goalkeeper called Bruce Grobler. He was a, he was a fruit kick. I remember we were playing a game and the left winger was taking on the right back at the halfway line. Took him on, next minute Bruce tackles him. And we're going, what are you doing out there? He says, I was bored. I had nothing to do. He went and tackled somebody at the halfway line. Mad one. He's, oh, he's mad. mad. <laughs> there were some characters in that team though, weren't oh, there? Oh yeah, there were, but... But they're all top players. They all played, you know, at top level and played for the countries. And they liked to party a bit, John. As yeah, well, they? they were very. It was just going into another party, coming from Ipswich and going to Liverpool. They were all very, very similar. But they're not. The, I call my football brothers. You know, you got, you know, Russell, Butch, George, Alan. They're still here, and and it's good that we're all together. There is something about this area, isn't there? You know, oh, yeah. you know, a, a lot of people when they say in the past, I didn't even know where Ipswich was, and you might have been oh, one I of them coming down on the yeah. bus, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but end up staying around the area and, well, and loving where we live. I've been here now, on and off, fifty years. You know what I mean? It's quite a long. Can you do a Suffolk accent, John? No, <laughs> <laughs> I can't even speak English. <laughs> Well, which what? brings me to uh, it, 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 Russell. Do you want to mention oh, the escape to victory God. story, or or Walkie? Do you want to tell us about I'll that? I'll tell you about it. Go on then. Go on then. But just about 
I've got a few you, things. You, you, you I had, a, I had a, whatever you want. Well, firstly, uh, when we sort of negotiated our trip, you know, we thought well, we're going to get some money for being this in this movie. But Bobby Robson just said, "This is what you're getting." Blah blah blah. So we go. We thought we're just going to go there and play football, and that's it. We didn't realise we're in all the scenes and whatever or speaking parts. So once we were there, you know, we knew we were there for a few weeks and we're in everything. And uh, the boys go to me, says, "Worky, can you try and see if we get more money or royalties?" I went, "I'm your man." So I went, I went to see the main. Pro- Producer or whoever it was, Freddie Fields. Yeah, Freddie Fields went to his hot- hotel and I, I says, "I'm speaking on behalf of Ipswich Town. I think we should, we have, we should have more money, or royalties, or we seriously think they're leaving." And his exact words were, "F off." <laughs> so I had to go back to the lads and say, "We're staying. You know, we need to stick that way." <laughs> so that was, um, and then. We did have, as I say, lines in the movie, and I had two lines in the movie. One was, I'll take the top bunk. The other one was, it's better than playing for Manchester. <laughs> That's the one I liked. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so basically, it was not to, I don't know, a couple of months after we'd finished and all that, and we went to the premiere. It was at the Gaumont, I think it was, and I was sitting, a few of the boys all went to watch it, and I was sitting with Gatesy in Brazil, who went in the movie, but they went. And I said, this is my bit when I'm speaking two lines. And it goes, and I go, that's not my voice. <laughs> so right away, so I had two lines, I was dubbed. So that's my, cla- that's my claim to fame. But Gatesy in Brazil told everybody in the world, and it just went, every- went viral. Two lines dubbed. Several people had commented ahead of tonight's show saying, well, we're going to have subtitles for you, yes. oh, uh, yeah, with yeah. reference to that. But, oh, uh, but what a great experience, though, oh, wasn't it? Wait. Just so tell you, you know, that Michael Caine, Sylvester Stallone was a bit of a, not the full shilling. Not, well, not our cup of tea, was it? No, it wasn't. It was a yeah, knob. but everybody yeah, else, yeah. Pelly, Bobby Moore, you know, Ozzy Adelis, famous players from different other countries, and we had a we had a ball for five weeks, didn't we? But during breaks in the filming, we'd have a little kick about, a little piggy in the middle, oh, or yeah. rondos, oh. as they, they call it. Yeah. And if you got stuck in the middle, around the outside, you got Bobby Moore, Pele, Ardiles, Kazimir Dana, Walkie, Mike Summerby, yeah. Harvard Tonnes and captain of the Norwegian side. Yeah. You, you know, you just never got a chance to get out. It was embarrassing and how good they were. Was. And Pele in his army boots and stuff like that. It didn't make yeah. any difference. By the way, Pele nutmegged me. And I was like, oh, he was about 45 or something then. <laughs> uh, he must have been good. He was not bad. <laughs> <laughs> He was half decent, wasn't he? Yeah. Uh, and of course, you had success when you came back to town, didn't you? Yeah, as I come, I come back because I, you know, I, I love Fipswich, you know, and I didn't want to leave in the first place, but I wanted to leave to win things. And I came back. I had offers from other teams, but I came back again, and, and yeah, and just enjoyed it. Yeah. But the third spell, I mean, the second spell was yeah, was the much, second spell was a bit dud. Yeah, it wasn't the best because I was playing with. You know, average players as such, but as I say, <laughs> the last one, the th- when I went back again, I went to Middlesbrough for a holiday, I say. I went to Middlesbrough for a year. You went to Middlesbrough you know, for a holiday? Yeah. Well, well oh that's what it was like, you know, I was first, on yeah. my own, I that's went there. <laughs> but <laughs> it's when I came back the third and you, time. But you, you came back and you were just training here, weren't you, to start Yeah, with? I just, basically I was just training week to week, keep myself fit and ended up being Man of the match every, you know the usual. Training, you know, just training on a Friday. <laughs> so then, I, then I, then I signed week to week, and then it went up to month to month, and then it went up to a year, yearly, and you know, and I played. But you only enough. missed what you missed two games in two seasons. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, I was. Well, I didn't train again. No, <laughs> I was getting was that, old. Was that, that was a secret? Was it? Yeah. That was a secret. Surprise, but, surprise. Because I had another it? good manager, you know, John Lyle was there, and he was like old school, and he let me off with. Yeah. Few things. I mean, that was a terrific season, wasn't it? I mean, this, obviously, oh. this, that's the last town team to win a, a yeah. division in, yeah. in, in 91 92. That was, that was fa- fabulous. Uh, yeah, we had a decent team, and as I say, it was getting back with the big boys. And yeah, but I was sad. I just thought, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm going to play as long as I can, and, and that's what I did, you know, and it, it got to the age where I thought. And in that third spell, yeah. You got a red card against oh, Norwich. 
this is yeah. Take that, us through that. That yeah. was uh, Darren Eddy. Yeah, Darren, well, anybody would kick Darren Eddy. Yeah, well, Darren Eddy. I thought he was about twelve. I, I was slightly older, and I actually tried to I tried to get him in the first half, but I was that late. I got him in the second. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, it was slight. Honest, it was, and it, and I got straight. But we lost the game then, so that was that's where I was more upset about. You know, but. Terrible red card, though, wasn't it? I, mean, he was I just, just he, was, he was slightly heart. faster, you know what I mean? And I just caught him. What? Which time? <laughs> it's, he, he wasn't the first one, he'd been caught like that. No. To be I like, I like the, the, my favourite story about that was the previous time you got sent off was for an altercation with Charlie George, wasn't it? <laughs> Which was like oh, Charlie, 20 yeah. years before. Yeah, Charlie. He was playing for Derby then, and Derby's pitch was usually, you know, mud tape and all that. And <laughs> I've slid, ground, and yeah. I've slid, slid in, tackled uh, Charlie George. He's turned round and headbutted me. <laughs> so I've then I've, I've re- thing me again and got him back again. The both of us get sent off. Yeah, <laughs> but a it's totally a, different generation I, from. I, uh, I think the game's Gary. easier today, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, the pitches, and when you slide down. Blame the pitch, yeah. I'm blaming the pitch, the pitch yeah. Uh, you, you brought up the uh, local derby against Norwich. Yes. Of, of which so. you're the record goal scorer. Yeah. Yeah, I think I've played... That's why they don't like me, because I've played the most derby games and scored the most goals. 19 games and nine goals, I think I've got. No, they just don't like you. Yeah, they don't like me, yeah. And I scored a hat-trick against them. And uh, that was at home. I think they got... It's either two penalties or one, but I got a hat trick. Was that the last person, town player, to score a hat trick? Alex Norwich? Matthew was the last Alex person, Matthew. town player, to score a hat trick. But see, when I, that time I scored a hat trick, I didn't have to buy a drink for about a month. A bit like yourself, Butch, regularly. Don't buy a <laughs> You're Scottish, John. <laughs> I thought I'd get a bite. <laughs> Uh, we'll we'll uh, let's talk a, a briefly for a couple of minutes just about yeah. the, the game this coming weekend. Um, certainly, we were on on fire on Monday night, yeah. weren't we, against Southampton? Uh, Norwich lost, thank goodness. Although yeah, they could have done us a bit of a favour, but I was happy to still see them lose. Yeah, how, how do you so see this I. playing out? Because the game at Portman Road, you know, you throw for, the form book out the window, and I, I, it was a really horrible game. I didn't like that game. I at didn't Portman like Road at all. it. But I thought they were there for the taking. Yeah. I don't. Th- I didn't think they were very good. They actually, when it was a Wouldn't draw, their goals offside as well. Yeah, I know. Yeah. But they, when they're getting a draw, it's as if they won the World Cup. Getting a draw at Portman Road. That's the way their fans react. So so far we've come, doesn't it? Yeah, that's what I mean. And I just think I've watched. I watched them against list, and I think they're there for the taking. I don't. I don't think they're best at in defence. And I just think you know we play. As well as we can. I know it's difficult away from home. I fancy our chances big time. What about you, Butch? Well, Norwich, they have won their last seven at home. Yeah. So they're pretty strong at home. Um, the last 11 games, won seven, drawn two, lost two. 23 points out of 33. So they've not scored as many yeah. as us, but they've conceded more than us as well. Yeah. So you sort of say they're there for the taking. But bad. it is, I mean, we had a... It, you know the atmosphere before the game was unbelievable. It was really, really pump, pumped up, and it'll be the same, same on Saturday at their place. And they, they'll love it to put a smoke, you know, put oh, a, yeah. you know, damage our uh, momentum. You know, for them, it's, it's a, a huge game having lost against Leicester. They need to, they need to consolidate as well for the playoffs. But yeah, I, I just, I saw glimpses of them when they went two one down against Leicester. They came out a lot more, and they, and Liam Gibbs came on from he used to be a town player. Um, you never speak to him again, but there we go. Uh, <laughs> and he came on and made a bit of a difference. He yeah. got forward and passed it really well. And they, they actually had a couple of good chances as well before um, Leicester got the third. So, yeah, they, they're they a strange team, aren't they? Yeah. Well, a horrible team, so. right enough. But they're a strange team where they you sort of think they can do they can do damage, mm-hmm. but at the same time, they're, vu- they're vulnerable to, to concede. Well, so yeah. it won't be nil-nil anyway. No. <laughs> Put it that Russ, way. what do you reckon? Um... I'm looking forward to it. I hope we just, you know, play it calm up until the game that nobody gets too excited about it all. Um, and I think we learned a lot from the derby early on in the season. I think one or two of the players didn't realise how big the derby is yeah. uh, here to uh, all the supporters. I, I think they realise now. Um, and again, I watched uh, snippets of the the game against Leicester the weekend and I, I I was quite pleased to see them take the lead 
I thought well, that's that's okay. I don't mind that. And then when they got beat three 0 I think that's even better because they've had the euphoria of going a goal up and then been demoralised and well beaten. And so they've come back down with a bit of a thump. They so they won't be looking forward to this match, will they? No, no, not at all. You know, the seven wins at home, which is great, super. But it's only going to be seven wins at home, you know, and this is going to come to a And stop we get to Saturday, sing top of the league at Carrow Road, don't we? Mm. Mm. Which will be very nice. Be good. I, think, I think it's an advantage for us that they, they need three points, don't they? It's not like yeah. they're in a situation where one point would suit them. Because I think so, they... so did Southampton as well, yeah. really, on, on uh, Monday. They, yeah. they needed to win that game. Yeah. To have a, a numerical advantage if they won their two games in hand over us. So, you know, they're, they're out of it now. But, you know, Norwich, need, Norwich really do need to win this game. Yeah, and I think because the game at Portman Road, th th they clearly just came for a point, didn't they? I, I don't know. think there's any doubt about that. But I don't think they can do that. on, on and, and I think that probably showed in their game against Leicester as well. Um, and I think that we will take the game to them in the same... Well, they'll try and take the game to us in the way that they tried to against Leicester. And they weren't good enough against Leicester, were they, frankly? And... I think they'll probably not be good enough against us. Um, hopefully, anyway. Um, oh, yeah. And, um, yeah, I think it's... Uh, I mean, it is. If you look at the stats, it's probably the most difficult game we've got left, I think, isn't it? If you look at the... I ignoring the Derby <sighs> element to it, even, that they, yeah, they've got such a good Yeah, you could say that, but look at, look at what Rotherham did to us. You know, that yeah, was unexpected, from you know, and... and but Any, Rotherham just came to make it, it difficult, didn't they? I think that's all they really wanted to do was just kind of frustrate us, whereas I don't think Norwich can do that. I think that because they need to get three points to confirm their top six. It's the same one, one game at a time. time. It's the same as well. We've got Hull away and Coventry away. Yeah, they're similar yeah. position. They're, yeah. They'll be going for top six, so they're going to come out. It's like Southampton had to come out at us on but Monday. I think that suits that us. That suits more, us, yeah, 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 really does. Okay, 3 1. <laughs> <laughs> 2 1. Four, four, two. Four, two. Last time, four, two. I think four, two. Been asked for the hat check. Well done. <laughs> I've done my research, John. Oh, did you? <laughs> I do. I do that every week sometimes. Oh, know. well done. Well done, man. I'll go two nil then. Oh. I'll go three nil. I think. Yeah. I oh. think if if we get our noses in front and get a couple in the first half, I think we could just see it out quite comfortably and, and bag another one later on. Wrong. I think there is a, another factor, of course, we've not mentioned is whether Kiefer Moore's fit. I think mm. that's uh, he's a key man for us at the moment, isn't he? I think if they if we win by whatever scores we've said, it's going to be a hell of a life of pitch next week. Isn't yeah, it? We'll yeah, we'll yeah. put it off till Friday. Won't wow. recover. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, bring it on. Well, next week we've got twenty fans coming over from Sweden. Oh, uh, there you go. For yeah. the capacity crowd next week, so uh, oh. and I think we've possibly right. got some Norwegians as well. Yeah. I think possibly making a, an appearance. So we're going to be full next week. Uh, Walkie for now. Thank you very much. Give me a big round of applause, everybody. Joy Walk. <laughs> Don't go away. You stay there. Um, has anybody, has anybody mentioned our leaderboard over there um, for our Keep It Up challenge? Has anybody mentioned that to you, Walkie? No. No. You've seen the show before, though, haven't you? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. So there is an opportunity for you to have a go at our Keep It Up challenge. Are you up for that? Yes. Excellent. Yay! Sponsored by Ginger Pickle. There you go, Walkie. There's your ball over in the performance yeah. area over there. Okay. <laughs> you, can you can do your lace if you like. Yep. Yeah, tie your lace up. Well, we'll go through um, this. Do you, you see at the top, Joe yeah, you Sheehan, 102. You, you'll have 60 seconds, Walkie. Okay. Terry's on the timer. Phil's got the whistle. Uh, as soon as the ball. Score as many goals as. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Not scoring yeah. goals this time. Yeah, score as many penalties. So this is, this is uh, as many times as you can keep the ball up. As soon as it hits the ground. That's it, OK? You only have one crack at it. Imagine it's a Friday. Um, so <laughs> the only one of us left on the leaderboard is Russell. And I think you're on. Russell, what are you on over there? Uh, 68. 28. 28. <laughs> yeah. OK, so... <laughs> <laughs> Empty your pockets. You know what they are. Top score, Joe Sheehan, is... 102. We think 103, actually, but... Yeah, possibly 103. Yeah, there's but a recount. VAR on that, yeah. Come on then, Walkie. Are you ready? ready? On the whistle.
<laughs> I think he's suggesting the ball needs a bit more air in it, I think. Uh, it has got probably down a bit since we started doing it. Come and sit down. Come and sit. Well done. Give him a round of applause, everybody. You are well and truly mid-table on the leaderboard, so well done. Absolutely fantastic. Now, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, don't forget to uh, smash that like button and subscribe as well. Uh, keep an eye on our website as well, www.lifesapitch.tv. You can order shirts, mugs, and we're about to release tickets for our end-of-season dinner. Uh, which will be at Venue 16, and we hope to see many, many of you there. Uh, it's time now to uh, find out the latest Ipswich Town news from Phil Ham from TWTD.co.uk, and that's brought to you in association with John Keeble Cars of Bramford. <laughs> And the North American Supporters Branch and their hat as well. Uh, well, actually, this is not kind of latest news. Um, it's more kind of news from a few weeks ago, really, because we obviously missed a, a show last week. But obviously, we couldn't mention, failed to mention the fact that since the last show, the huge news that the club has secured a £105 million investment from a US-based property equity, private equity firm, Bright Path Sports Partners, who have taken a stake of just over 40% in the club. Bright Path Sports Partners website describes them as the first ever private equity and advisory firm exclusively dedicated to raising and deploying Native American capital into professional sports franchises, facilities and ancillary opportunities. Uh, they're to be represented by co-founders Jake Zarnow and Philip Ciano, uh, with their investment comprised of several limited partners, of which Sam Simon, the founder of Simon Group Holdings and Simon Sports, uh, the primary funder. Zarnow and Simon have joined the board of Game Changer 20 Limited, which is the holding company of the club. The new investors will bring expertise in media, broadcasting and marketing from their time involved in US sports, although the current off-field management team will remain in charge. From what I gather, the funds have not gone straight into the club in one go, but can be drawn down as required. CEO Mark Ashton outlined the priorities, uh, which are the already planned refurbishment of the training ground with the club, including some shots of the plans in their video uh, interview announcing the new money and moving the academy to Category 1. A new cobalt stand is planned for later on down the line, while the cash could also help bridge town's progression to the Premier League this summer should they win promotion, as there's a bit of a lag before the, the media revenue rolls in. So, uh, yeah, very positive news for the club uh, and sort of shows the, the progress that's being made over the last few years. Um, town boss Kieran McKenna has been nominated for the EFL Championship Manager of the Season Award. The Blues boss is shortlisted alongside Daniel Farker of Leeds and mm. Hull City's Liam... <laughs> <laughs> that deserves a bigger boo than that one. Daniel Farker. Yes, yeah, was, it, was it Daniel Farker or Leeds that got no, the boo? Both. Uh, yeah. and, and, and Hull City's um, Liam Rossini, who obviously was a, a lone player at town at one point. The winner will be announced at the EFL's annual awards ceremony, which will be held in London on Sunday the 14th of April. Perhaps surprisingly, no town players are nominated for the division's player of the season gong, with Kean and Dewsbury Hall of Leicester, Christ Senior, Crescencio, Somerville, Leeds and Sammy Smodich of Blackburn, those in the running. Wes Burns looks likely to be a contender for the goal of the season for his strike against Coventry, but so far no shortlist has been announced for that category. And boxing news. This is a rarity for, for this element of the show. And on Sunday, Fabio Wardley retained his British and Commonwealth heavy heavyweight title belts following a sensational draw with Fraser Clark at the O2 Arena. Wearing the ITFC badge on his shorts and gloves and with town CEO Mark Ashton, among a number of town figures, including one of whom is here, in the crowd, Wardley was viewed a 114-113 winner of the 12-round contest by one judge. Another gave it 115-112 to Clark who you may remember took to the Portland yeah, Road Yeah, I think pitch. that judge left his white stick outside because that, that was no way. Well, that was that. Bearing in mind that he was Dr. Point as well, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, he was Dr. Point, yeah, and um, put down. Yeah, so Clark, who you may remember, took to the uh, Portman Road pitch in a Norwich City shirt. Oh, he was worse than that. that, that, that come on. That was terrible, yeah. 
uh, at halftime of the Bristol City match, uh, and, and the third saw it 113 113. Um, Wardley had Burton on Trent, Bourne Clark. He's Burton on Trent, he's not even from Norwich, is he? Burton on Trent. Oh, yeah, well, close uh, to you, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, uh, on the floor towards the end of the fifth round, but the former white collar. Boxer's nose bled throughout, and by the end, his right eye was badly swollen. The fight has been hailed as a classic, and the two are set to meet again, with Portman Road being mooted as a yeah, potential venue. Yeah, a lot of people venue. are talking about that now. Mm. Yeah. So could that happen? And will could Mark do. end up on the PA doing his... Uh, in well, the blue corner! Well, I've, I, 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 I'd like to give it a go. Ladies and gentlemen, in the blue... No, no, they'll, they'll hire somebody in, won't they, to do that? I'm sure they will. Yeah, yeah. but I think a chorus of Oh, Fabio Wardley is uh, recommended, don't you? Brilliant, that'll do. Fantastic. I say, there was a great spirit between the two <laughs> afterwards, wasn't there? there? There was sort of such a... Obviously, there was a lot of pantomime beforehand, wasn't there, with the stuff on the pitch? There was pitch great respect between kind of, the two of them. It was the, a hell of yeah, a fight. And the way they sort of uh, talked afterwards and how they've been on social media, I thought, was, yeah. was, has been terrific. But you great were there, respect. weren't you? I was there, yeah. And uh, it was... Uh, it was a, a, one hell of a fight. There was a lot of Fabio's blood around on the canvas, on the referee, on Fraser Clark, and um, you know how both of them did the did the the full match. I have no idea because Clark, when he was at the end of the, the the bout, was on the ground and they couldn't get him up. You know, they just literally couldn't lift him up because he was just so spent, exhausted. So uh, yeah, a couple of titans. He's a real warrior, and there were a lot of pictures on social media. Uh, one with Fabio Wardley with blood all over his face and one of you, Butch, with blood all over your head. Um, so a lot of people were comparing the uh, the two battles. A couple of warriors, it said, on many social media posts. More like a couple of idiots, really. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, I, I mean, I'm sure that he'll be he'll be uh, give, or sent pictures of uh, fancy dress costumes like I do every uh, uh, yes. Halloween. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so all those years in boxing, then he ends up like a fancy dressed man like me. <laughs> <laughs> Shocking. Scary. The social media was appalling, isn't it, really? <laughs> anyway, thank you very much for That's the news. Right. Thank you, but well done, Fabio. Uh, still yeah, well kept done, his, uh, his titles. Uh, time to have a look at what's happened to ITFC on this day in history, brought to you in association with Fred Olsen Logistics. <laughs> Well, on this day, the 3rd of April, 1982, this is a bit of a strange one. During halftime in a 1-0 home win over Coventry City, members from the 9th Ipswich Deben Cubs had to brew up in the centre circle as part of a cub competition to make tea in unusual places. <laughs> Very strange. Also on this day, on the 3rd of April, 1999, the Blues marched to their highest away league victory with a 6-0 mauling of Swindon Town. George Burley's men stayed second in Division 1 after Craig Taylor was sent off for the Robins after six minutes. Also, I'm just going to skip forward a bit of editorial licence here to Saturday the 5th of April, 1980, just because it's quite topical. Ipswich moved third in the first division, that's the Premier League, just for all the people to get mistaken, you know, what league we're in at the moment, you know. This was in the Premier League in 1980. <laughs> Ipswich moved third in the first division as they dispatched Norwich City. 4-2 at Portman Road. The game marked Johnny Walk's first hat-trick. Yay. Is that an omen? It's an omen. It's an omen. It's an omen. And there you go. History, facts and figures of every day of the year. How Four sweet two. was that, Walkie? Come on, oh, how sweet was that? That's the best. You can't get any better on scoring a hat trick against that small team called Norwich. <laughs> <laughs> did did you get the ball? After yeah, I got the ball, yeah. Where is it? It's gone. I made a few bob for did charity. It? <laughs> <laughs> for charity. Yeah, yeah. I'd done the same when I got Zico shot and for Scotland. You know, against Brazil, I got Zico number 10. Well, he uh, actually asked for my shot, seriously. Well, he did because you were number 10, weren't you? Yeah, that was yeah. the reason. And, and it, I gave did it. He, a, I gave it. You, t I did gave he know it who you were? We knew that game who I was. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but as I say, then I gave up weight to a charity, and it made loads of money. We're not even mentioned the World Cup yet, have we? <laughs> you played at a World Cup. Well, we're going to have to get you back for part <laughs> two at <laughs> some point. <laughs> yeah. And don't forget the magic ball that we've got there, which is remind us, Phil, what that ball was from. This was from the five nil when Alex Matthews scored his hat trick. Oh. Yeah. Um, and. Um, it was, uh, sh yes, it was It was kind of 
It was booted up booted onto, the, on roof, the, roof, onto the roof, and then someone got it and got it down. And um, the, the ball yeah, that Alex Matthew has got, uh, which he says I think is, is the hat trick ball, isn't the ball isn't that he's called the hat trick no, with. It is. was one that was used later on. This is the one. Yeah, so that's the magic ball. We can all touch it if you want. Good luck. It's like a it's like a holy relic of Ipswich Town's history, holy isn't it? Relic. Uh, I can think relic. of a few of like those. Um, <laughs> now, I've got three uh, old relics on here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can say that. I'm okay. glad you didn't include no, me in that. No, it's Mark, me, and Russell. Yeah. Let's <laughs> 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 we'll talk about royalty here. Come on. We are indeed. Uh, it's time for uh, this week's Man v Fat results. Uh, and no action, says Man v Fat Mark this week uh, because of the bank holidays. But here are the results from our Chelmsford League. So scoring eight goals this week into my belly. So into my belly, eight. Cholesterol Palace, three. Not a Thin Man Forest, 12. Ambrosia Dortmund, four. Largentina, six. Oh my Match God. of the day, six. Uh, great result on Monday. Am I right? We once beat Southampton 5-2 at Portman Road with Alan Brazil scoring all five, 1982. Is that right? Yep. 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 I was with Alan the other day at Higham Races, actually, and he did mention the fact that he did get all five that day. Yep. Yeah. In between slurps. He's still on good wine. form then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. So thank you to the Man V Fat team. Uh, we're out of time. Walker, you're going to have to come back. We're going to have to get you back for part two. Yeah. There what, are, what, there what, are only you mean in the Premiership? When we're in the Premier League, yep. Get on. Get you back in the Premier League. There are only uh, two other people that have had that honour. One is George Burley, the other is Pat Gobbold. So oh, you're right. in high esteem being asked back again. Up there with Pat. I just have to say that Pat is out of hospital now. She, she oh, went she? in. Oh, yeah. She went in, so she's back now. Great. Yep. If you're watching, Pat, we love you lots. Uh, send you all the very best. Uh, thanks for coming on the show. Really oh, good to Matt. see you. Give him one more big round of applause. Johnny Wall! <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Fantastic, I love it. Well done, Eddie, for thinking up the lyrics. Thank you very much. Uh, to keep in touch, don't forget, check us out on our socials. That's uh, X, formerly Twitter, Facebook, Insta, and check out the website for details of our forthcoming end-of-season dinner. Thanks to our main sponsor, DPS Tech, also supported by All About Hearing, marketing company Ginger Pickle, Forward Floors, Come Hither Design, The Hudson Group, Sound 4 Pro Audio, Fred Olsen Logistics, John Keeble Cars in Bramford, The Dove in St. Helen Street in Ipswich, Ashford Wright, and The Sofa is sponsored by DPS Tech. From all of us here on Life's a Pitch TV, have a great week. And Norwich, we're coming to get you. Up the yeah. town, everybody! Yeah.